three of us lay in the dark, waiting. An hour or so later, we heard a key slowly turning in the lock. Silently, the door opened and then hit the bed. The intruders pushed gently at first, not realizing that the three of us were squatting on the floor at the other end of the bed, heaving all our weight into it. They pushed harder. Soon they understood that we were blocking them and howled in rage, slamming their bodies against the door. It flung open, but we pushed all our weight against the bed and shut it again. By now, both sides in this life and death tug of war were frantic. I jumped onto the bed to again tie the doorknob to the bedpost when through the crack in the door, one of the attackers stabbed a knife in my direction. My mind screamed, they want to kill us. The battle continued. They cracked their bodies against the door and slammed again and again into the bed. They screamed threats and curses as we bashed ourselves into the bed. Unable to force the door open, they abruptly retreated. A heavy silence fell. To rest before the inevitable next siege, I retreated to my bug-ridden bed. My mind was full of ghastly thoughts. What was I doing here, trapped in the cholera-infested ghettos of Istanbul, a target for the underworld? Tossing over and over, I called to mind the life I had left in Highland Park. I'm a simple boy with a loving family and friends. Why did I leave the shelter of such a peaceful home? Now I'm helpless and alone, I prayed. I came here in search of enlightenment. Is this the path I have to tread in order to learn surrender? Then another thought emerged. If so, let it be. In our predicament, only God could save us. My prayers were interrupted by the door smashing into the bed. Round two of the battle began. Our would-be assassins shouted in wrath, pounding ferociously, a moment of inattention, and we would be dead. Despite the biting cold, sweat flooded from our pores. We gasped in exhaustion, and our limbs were battered. But our predators did not tire. Their roars terrorized us. By this time, I felt as if my bladder were about to burst. The only toilet was in the hallway outside the door. Three formidable battles raged simultaneously within me. The battle to keep the assassins out, the battle to keep my urine in, and the battle to make sense of it all. Unable to bear it any longer, I deserted Ramsey and Jeff and climbed up to the windowsill. There I relieved myself into the alley below. Suddenly, a woman's scream blasted my ears. The alley was about 15 feet wide. Straight across from me was a window where an old Muslim woman, dressed in a traditional black veil, had been watching. In my desperation, I had not seen her, but she stared straight at me. Outraged by my obscenity, she screamed in revulsion. This was too much. I stood helplessly on the window ledge with my pants down, urinating face to face with her and begging for pity. Cursing me, she threw a shoe into my face. It was a direct hit. I shut the window, jumped down, and wiped blood from my nose and mouth. But I had not finished. My bladder was still bursting. Meanwhile, Ramsey was crying out, Monk, get back here, we can't hold them off. I was losing all three battles. I can't survive, I thought. God help me. Just then, I saw the answer 
and finished where I'd left off in the shoe. Putting it in a desk drawer, I re-entered the battle. Pressing firmly, we held them off. But we were trapped with neither food nor water. It was only a matter of time before they broke in. As the gray light of the dawn appeared, we agreed that our only hope was to quietly escape through the door between attacks. We decided to risk our lives on the tiny chance of escape. We had no idea whether a guard was standing post outside our door, but if so, we were dead. It was a chance we had to take. Slowly and as quietly as possible, we swung the door open into the pitch darkness. I could not see my hand before my face. As we tiptoed forward, the aged wooden floor creaked at every step, each creak like a scream. In this darkness, would we blunder right into one of them? My heart was pounding. We made it to the Gothic staircase. Still unable to see, we groped the outside wall, terrified of falling over the other side. In this way, we crept down the staircase toward the dimly lit pool hall, where to our horror, the guard lay sleeping on a pool table. Holding our breath, we stole across the room to the door. It was locked. The latch would not budge. We had never seen a lock like this. Frantically, each one of us tried to open it. Finally, our attempts roused the guard from his stupor and he shouted to the others. From another set of stairs came the horrifying sound of their stampede. Oh my God, I gasped. Open the lock, quick, Ramsey, open the lock. I'm trying, I'm trying. He jiggled the lock in every possible way to no avail. The stomping of boots as our captors came closer made me sick. Just as they were almost upon us, all at once, the lock popped open and we burst into the street, running as we had never run before, backpacks and all. Behind us, we could hear the screams of our adversaries. Not looking back, we dove into a taxi. We knew only one place in Istanbul. Blue Mosque, Blue Mosque, we chanted in unison. But scanning through the rearview mirror at the gang of men approaching us, the taxi driver did not move. He saw an opportunity. Two hundred dollars, he demanded. What? Two hundred dollars, Jeff cried. The driver shouted loudly, Two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Hastily, we agreed. Yes, two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. He zoomed off. But were we safe? Jeff, the keeper of the wallet, was concerned. We can't give him two hundred dollars, he whispered. Will he be the one to kill us? We didn't want to find out. At the first stoplight, we bolted from the taxi. The driver howled, $200, $200. But we were gone.